Welcome back. Moving forward, super excited. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to, in fact, do two things. First, create a virtual device so you can emulate the actual app on an emulator so that you can actually see your app the way it looks like on the phone. And second, I'm also going to demonstrate how to create your actual Android phone. Perfect. Let's jump right in. First things first, let's go to, once you open up Android Studio, I'm going to go ahead and click on Tools. And the first option is the AVD Manager, right? Which is the Android Virtual Device Manager. This is where you would set up your emulators. So if you recall, one of the first lessons, once we were installing Android Studio, we checked this option, right? To install the AVD. However, once everything is done and completed, now you would like to change or switch to another emulator or add additional devices, you could do so. So first, let's take a look at the AVD manager, and then I'm gonna demonstrate my physical Android phone and how I'll go about connecting it. So let's go ahead and click on this. This brings up a dialog box and lists all of the virtual devices that we have. And again, by default, the Nexus 5X with API 28 is the one that we actually selected during our install of Android Studio with a resolution of 1080 by 1920, 420 DPI. The API is 28, which is, of course, the Android Pi or P, the Android 9, Google APIs, and so on. The actions. I have available is of course I can either launch the ABD in the emulator or I can edit this ABD or I can create new virtual devices by clicking on this button here. So I'm going to first go ahead and show you and demonstrate how we can edit this particular Nexus 5X device. So I'm going to click on this pencil icon and this brings up another dialog box which is the virtual device configuration. And here I can, of course, change the name of this AVD device. So especially if you have multiple apps that you're actually creating or working on, whether for yourself or for your clients, as a freelancer, you could then name these devices accordingly. You change by clicking on the change button and then select a different device, right? Whether it's for the phone or for the TV, for the Wear OS or tablet. So as a quick homework, just go through some of these different types of phones. So I'm gonna leave the Nexus 5X as default. So let's cancel out of here. Just wanted to show you what happens if I select Nexus 6. It just gives me the preview, and of course, the size and density and so forth. And this is only helpful if you're actually developing an app based on a certain phone, whether it's your class requirement or yourself. So let's cancel this particular screen. The next option is the Pi, of course, Android 9, which is the x86. If I click on change here, it brings up another dialog box. And this gives me the release names column, the API level, the 64-bit or standard x86 processor-based computer, or the and the target APIs as well. So notice in this instance, it did install the Pi API 28, but we can also download the 64-bit, okay? And this is helpful, especially for, let's say, acceleration, or it's better if you're using 64-bit operating system, which in this instance we are. So I'm gonna go ahead and, in fact, click download and let it download from the repository the necessary files for the 64-bit as well. And likewise, you could do so for the rest of so as soon as I click on download, of course, the license agreement comes in. I'm going to click on accept. Make sure you scroll through it. Just kind of skim through and read the license agreement. It's always a good practice, by the way. And then click next. It's going to go ahead and install that particular Intel x86 Atom 64 system image for you. So this is going to take some while before it actually finishes up the install. So while this is doing so, 
I'm going to go back to the other screen. Well, let's wait before it actually does it so that you don't get confused. So I'm going to wait till it installs and downloads the Pi 4X86 64-bit Android 9. Perfect. So once this is installed, simply click on Finish, and you'll notice that you have two versions now. Pi 4 64 bit, and then of course Pi 4 the x86. And likewise, you can of course download the Pi version for 28 or other versions like Oreo and so on. So it depends on the type of device that you have or the phone that you have. You can download the same. So, as a practice, go ahead. If you do not have the API level 28, then I would recommend that we can download the API 27 so that at least you can practice more. Because for Android 9, at this point in time, while I'm recording this, I think Google Pixel and then maybe another phone, those are the only two mobile devices that you can actually install the version 9 or the Android Pie on them. And hopefully, as maybe next month or so, in a couple of months, you should be able to have additional devices that would be able to install the Android 9. But for now, just wanted to demonstrate quickly how you can download the images as well. The recommended tab kind of shows you that you can also download the, under the release name column, you can download the Oreo or the Nougat or the Pi. So again, it's just up to you, it depends on your own requirements. And for myself, I need to maybe also download the version 20, API 27 as well. But for right now, I'm going to leave it as is. Other images tab, once again, lists additional release names that you can take a look at and download. Perfect. So I'm going to cancel for now. And then here's the device frame checkbox. If I enable the device frame, which is simply a frame around the Android emulator window, that mimics the look of a real Android device. So once I check this box, I can also click on Show Advanced Settings. And if I click on the Advanced Settings, scroll down, I have additional options. For instance, I can pick and choose the Emulate Performance section, the memory and storage. I can increase the RAM, internal storage, the SD card, device frame, and then I can specify the custom skin definition and keyboard. So that way it's pretty neat in respect that I can change the Android virtual device properties and configurations right here. I can also specify the setup orientation from landscape to portrait and so forth. So let's click on finish on this part and we have our configuration made to this particular virtual device. Now, in the second part, moving on further, I also mentioned that I'm going to demonstrate how to connect the actual Android phone so you can actually see whether you're able to do so or not with version 9. So let's go ahead in order to connect to your Android device. Let me bring up the Android Studio here first. And if I bring up the virtual device, notice at this point I only have one. Okay. So let's close out of here. If I need to connect my own phone as an emulator, instead of using the virtual device, I could do so. So for instance, at this point in time, I do not have the phone connected. So what I'm gonna do is try to run this app. So for instance, if I click on the green arrow here, where it says run app, what this is going to do is bring up a dialog box and it asks me select deployment target. And right now, of course, I only have the Nexus 5X, which is the virtual device that we just completely took a look at. If I were to connect my own phone, there's a few steps that I need to take to be able to connect my own mobile device. And let me show you that first before I actually connect. So let's cancel out of here. If I were to go to Google, there is a an easier way to do this, by the way, okay? 
and this works very well at least for for myself and hopefully it'll work for you too if you're using chrome then simply launch or go to visor which is a chrome extension and just install it okay so here's the name here's the url or just search for visor chrome extension and install it once you install it what this will do is will allow you to actually take your device and show it on your desktop that's the first thing it's going to do and once that's done and that's your homework by the way whatever i'm uh, letting you know here is your homework to so try it out if you have any questions post them in the discussion area and that's the best way to learn so once you have added the extension all you have to do is simply hook up your phone with a usb cable that's all you have to do so from your computer to your phone you need to use a standard usb cable as soon as you do it notice it brings up your Android phone. Since I'm using the free version of Visor, so I'm going to click cancel and voila, here's my phone. And I can, of course, go left and right, right, and go to settings and so forth. So once my phone is now connected, let's go back to Android Studio and notice my phone is right here, right? Demonstrated how to connect the phone. All you have to do is just install the Chrome extension, hook up your USB cable to your computer, and it should be good to go. Now, from Android Studio, at this point in time, after my phone is connected, if I click on Run App, brings up the dialog box, and perfect. So it shows the connected devices, which is Samsung SM A520F, that's the name. And it's currently running Android 8 API 26. And here's the catch. If you're running API 26, obviously you need a minimum of API 28 for Android 9 Pi. So this device that I've just connected, just for demonstration purposes, would not be able to use as an emulator because obviously this is the version API 26 and you need minimum 28 whereas the virtual device is using 28, okay? So in this lesson, I just wanted to demonstrate at least you're able to connect your Android phone so that once you're building apps, you're not only using the emulator, comes as a virtual device, you can in fact use your own phone as well. Now to overcome this workaround is obviously to go back to the properties of the virtual device and add or change the API version to 26. And then of course, I should be able to connect well and then run my app on the phone as well. And I'm gonna demonstrate maybe later on as we move forward. But for right now, just understand how to configure your virtual device and how to connect your phone. If you need to change these settings, by the way, on your phone, you can always bring this up and another setting that I want to show you that you want to change if you do not see on your phone is by going to the settings. And within settings, you should see something called about phone. And within about phone, you are going to look for, or let me go back here, or let me search. So you're going to search for your build number. Okay, so just type build number and search for build number click on this option and it'll show you this bill and notice the bill number all you have to do is just tap about seven times on the bill number and the developer mode will be turned on so the developer mode will be turned on only after you click about five or seven times on bill number so if i go back back one more time you'll notice the developer options will show up right here. If I click on developer options, there will be an option called, if I scroll down, called USB debugging. And this option needs to be turned on in order for you to actually see your phone on your desktop and to be able to connect 
to Android Studio as well. So if I turn this option off, notice it will disconnect the device from here as well as on my Android Studio as well. So there are no connected devices at this point. If I turn this option back on again, you will notice that it shows up on my connected devices within Android Studio. And I'm going to be able to see a preview of my actual phone as well. Perfect. So that way, I can now do both, right? I can use the virtual device or connected device. But keep in mind that your device must have the capability to run Android 9 Pi, which is the API 28. And at this point, I think Google Pixel has that, maybe another set of phones. So hope this helps practice with this. If you have any questions, post them in the discussion area. Be happy to help. Let's move to the next lesson.